I um, have been living in Los Angeles for quite a while now. I make things. I write, I draw, I paint, I arrange, um, I teach, I walk, I run, I go outside. Um, right now I'm making a lot of drawings and paintings and writing um, and trying to combine all of those together. And that's the current thing I'm working on. And just um, looking, like being outside and intense observation. I've been volunteering for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife and um, one of the things I do is observe. So I've been trying to learn how to observe and um, and then how that is affecting my practice. Like how does that change me and what kind of content and thinking does that give me that's different than what I've been trained to do. I mean I think I, I was trained as a designer and I think that the kind of design I was trained for was really about design and the craft of design. And I love all that and was, I've always been super proud of being someone who can work and make work in that way. But I think design has changed and I've changed and I'm much more interested in what design brings to something else. So, I'm kind of following what I love to do, which is watching animals and birds and hiking and being inside, and then trying to see what that, how that affects design, how it affects the kind of work I make, how does that affect the way I teach, what does that bring to life? It's really about a life. Yes, it does. It's really affecting my writing because I, I've been trying to write more nonfiction and more about nature, which sounds kind of dull. So I've been trying to figure out how to make that meaningful and significant to myself. I mean, I want to make myself happy. Yeah. Most of all. Benjamin Weissman invited me to do a writing workshop way back, and I never thought that I could write, and that was mind-blowing, because I just sat down and wrote, and then I brought it in and read it to people, and they were so generous and gracious and kind to actually consider it as writing. Um, and that opened everything up, and then I, I thought, that was that was amazing, and from there, I I've just been exploring different forms of writing and how that comes back into my design work or my work work. I don't know. It's so it's so much about this thing called design anymore. It's design has become so much more fluid and um, indefinable too much more of a juxtaposition. So the way that writing can expand that and the way that narratives can um, tell you what something needs to be or wants to be. So the writing, they really go hand in hand. I think it's a lot the way that you and I think about writing too. Yeah, I mean I think it's maybe, I don't even know if it's synthesis, it's that they are indistinguishable sometimes. Like one takes a visual form and one takes a more um, language form. But of course, there's so many overlaps with that too. But I think that writing helps you 
open up what something's going to look like visually in a way that it wouldn't if you just sat down and like like forced something to happen. There's something to be said too for that kind of making where you just sit down and start making. Um, but I, I think writing helps me think about it in a more narrative or um, the forms of writing and the way that language works helps me think about the design in a different way too. And then it's content. Like I like making my own content. That's a great question. I haven't figured it out yet, um, but it's definitely made me think more about other kinds of disciplines. So I, I ride around in um, cars with biologists, and their concerns are so different from what designers think about or what happens in an art school or um, when you're talking to someone in film or theater. But we all have a similar language, but biologists have this whole other vernacular, obviously. And the way they see time and the way that things happen is so different for me. Um, and I, I've kind of loved this idea of that it might be more glacial, the way things change and the way that things accumulate. And um, the idea of sitting quietly for four hours and nothing happening is as interesting and as exciting as like like having a deadline and like just making something. Um, so in the classroom, I think I've become more observant and more willing to stand back and let it, let the let things happen. Like create a place for something to happen. But it's the same as like hiking you out into the mountains and setting up your gear as like setting up a classroom. For something to happen, it might not happen, and you want it to be free, you want it to be wild and free. Like you want them, you want the students to find what it is in them, and not me putting what I think on it. Like I have a certain kind of knowledge and specificity and expertise in in a certain way, and it's limited. Um, so I want to bring that as like. This is my equipment that you can use if you want, or not. But um, if you want it, it's here. Um, and then you you need to you need to fledge. <laughs> I think because I'm from the prairie in the Midwest, and this kind of um, um, there's a certain kind of work ethic, there's a certain kind of, for lack of a better word, like a moral kind of way of thinking about things. There's, there's a different kind of glacial time, like there's snow. There, I'm the chatty person there. Um, actually, I'm not that chatty. <laughs> In my family, I've maybe, I've maybe talked like I spent every single summer with my uncles and I just remember going home one day and going my uncle came and spoke with me and he said he saw a bluebird wow it was kind of a moment so I think that this that I think that I bring when I moved to California um, the light and the it, I can't think of any other word, but it's completely unforgiving. LA doesn't even care if you're here. Um, and being from the Midwest, where it, it is really about you. you live there, you love it there, you are, um, you take part in the arts, and you have this kind of good life. Um, but in some ways, there there were a lot of restrictions for me there. So coming out here is just like what. And it's every day is paradise. The light's so beautiful all the time. I can be outside all the time. It's kind of extraordinary. And I think that that changed my work too. I was like, that and CalArts. I mean, CalArts has been a huge 
influence on how I think about things, how I make things. I knew about Cranbrook, um, but I didn't want to go where there was more snow and gray um, and ten months of cold. I wanted to go somewhere else. I wanted to go somewhere where nobody knew me and I didn't know anything. I wanted to go somewhere and just be completely confused and disoriented and not know what was going to happen. I think if I'd gone to Cranbrook, the school itself would have been unknown for me, but I would have known everything else. Yeah. Okay. I was completely, I, I was just telling David that I had never been on a drive, I had never driven on a hill. I didn't know you had to accelerate to get up the hill. I'd never been on a freeway where there was a turn. I was just used to going straight on the flat. Yeah, I was lost. I didn't. Um, it, there's some familiarity because I had seen movies and everything that you go by here is like, oh, I've seen that in a movie, and that's that's like really exciting and thrilling. And mountains, I still can't get over mountains and the crazy birds out here and the flora and the fauna. And then just getting used to the idea of um, seasons that aren't drastic, like the heat could kill you, but in where I'm from, it it's serious. You could die if you're not prepared. Like you could go outside and freeze to death. Your face could freeze to a puddle. And that's the end. So I was lost here, but in a whole different way, and like a magical. I just loved it. I loved it. Still, still orienting. And I still like to get lost. Um, the thing about LA is that you can drive somewhere and get lost because it's so big. And then you see things that you can't even believe exist. The last time I was out driving, I was coming back from the airport and I I was daydreaming and I missed my exit, so I ended up somewhere in South Central. And just the buildings were amazing and like these huge wide boulevards that are unlike anywhere else. Um, and pedestrians, people in the street. I mean, that's not the thing you think about in LA. You just think everybody's in their car, but they're not. And now that I have an electric car, I have to actually pay attention to what I'm doing and get back on the road and get home. <laughs> Maybe not the vernacular, but definitely the light. And that seems like such a cliche, but it, it's, it's sunny here all the time. So when, it, when there's a cloud, it's actually noteworthy. And, um, so maybe it, it's the, um, it is the, the place, not so much the vernacular of the city. I think you can't not be affected by place. So when people used to come visit, I used to take them on a white tour and a black tour. And they were actually the same tour. But we would go see white things and black things. And it was an architectural tour. So there was a house on 6th Street that was all white. And it had, I don't know, like 30 or 40 Davids, statues of David, out in front. And then in the winter, they'd put down white felt for snow. And then that was just a few blocks from the all black house. So the, everything was black. Like the whole house was black, the walls were black. And um, then we would go up and look at the chemisphere and we'd like skulk around and try to see what we could see inside, which was but um, yeah, so there was a lot of things like that. 
the thing I love to take people to and tell them to not miss is to just go into the mountains and walk around. Cause it's like it's right here and it's so astonishing. And um, if you go a lot, you start to see the subtle shifts as things change. The, the, the foliage and the animals that you see. That's that's the surprising part of LA, that you're right there, you're 15 minutes away from the mountains. And tar pits in the mountains. Like, where else can you find tar pits besides the tar pits? 